Hi there, and welcome to Lemony Fizz. This lesson is going to be about taking um, a snap journal or a snap binder like this that's already kind of set up and pre-made and turning it into a recipe binder. Well, you could use this for any kind of um, memory album or mini album, but in this case, I'm going to do mine for recipes because I really wanted to use this new paper from um, Simple Stories, which is this collection right here. You can do this with any collection. Simple Stories makes their collection super easy to just make done for you pages really fast, like this example right here on their on their cover. This one comes with all these papers that you see, and then there's the uh, tags on the back of some of them, and the little like quote embellishments, and then um, larger ones that would be great for filling the four by six, which I'll show you in a minute, and then a sticker page. So you've got a ton of um, things just alone in this paper pack, but then there's also, I'm going to use these What's Cooking uh, bits and pieces. So they're just like little die cuts that are already done for you. And then there's a journal. It's the What's Cooking journal bits. And so these are like journaling sizes or can be used with journals. And it shows you on the back what's included. Then there's also these recipe cards. So that's the collection we're going to use with this. As far as our page protectors, we're going to use um, these six by eight pockets. Okay. So just super quick and easy to fill with things that you could use for photos as well as recipe cards. Um, I think the idea for me is going to be using family recipes that are my favorite and then trying to capture photos of those recipes in action, dinner time, snacks, desserts, that kind of thing. There are photo flip pockets. There are uh, three by four pages that you can add into the journal. And then there are also these four by six packets, which are perfect for these recipe cards. So if you, if you just have a bunch of recipe cards that you want to include in here, but they don't and you don't want to be gluing them down onto anything like a, an old family recipe, you can just slip these in and then they're protected. So I'm going to go ahead and open all these up and then um, get a few of them filled to show you what we're going to be accomplishing. And then we're going to go through a couple pages together. Once you get your snap album open, this is actually what's included in here. So you've got the, two, it's a two ring binder, so you can easily add and take out pages. It's got dividers that are in that, um, in the red color, which is the same as the binding. You've got um, journaling pages, which are like um, bullet journal kind of style, plus regular journaling pages, which these would be great for larger recipes in this case. Or if you were doing a family journal, you could do family journaling, obviously. There are um, three different chipboard tabbed dividers, and I will show you how to cover these with uh, pattern paper as we get going. And then there are a set of, looks like, three six by eight, three four by six, and then um, these are probably a three by four and then a four by six, and there are three of those. So you don't even have to buy the extras to get started with this. Um, it's just in case you want to be able to put more in there right off the bat. Right, so I have taken out the journaling pages and the, the the tab dividers because we're going to actually decorate these together. And then I just wanted to show you how quick and easy it is to fill these. So I already had a few pages made and I just uh, basically put one with a design facing this direction and one with the design facing that direction. Later, I'll probably cover these with different designs, but just for the sake of the video right now, I've got a, a double sided page and I just slip it down inside that page protector. Okay. And it's done. So you can have instant pages. And then these are the recipe cards, which I didn't actually even realize, but they match the paper collection perfectly. And there are two of each, so I've just done them double sided. So if you just wanted to throw recipe cards in there, also you could. We're actually going to decorate a pocket or two of these as well. So I'm going to set this aside, and we are going to work on decorating this page. So I've cut these. Um, six by eight because that is the size for that page protector there's a little bit of a gap at the top so if you needed a little more space uh, you could do it just a little bit longer see how this doesn't quite reach the top i kind of like that though because then they're not getting like mushed and bent at the top of your paper or at the top of your book in case something gets stacked on it or whatever okay so i'm going to go ahead and do this one really quick and i've cut this again six by eight this one is cut at four by six, and I'm just going to run some adhesive along the edge of it. 
I don't know why I put the lid back on this thing because I can never get it back off. And this is one of those sheets that had um, like the quotes or sentiments on the other side, but I'm, I mean, you can, unless you're going to buy the pack in, in twos, you're, you're going to have to sacrifice something at some point. Okay. And then I'm just lining this up with the edges and this would be a space for a photo or a recipe card. And then, and it, it would probably be like not one that was written in family handwriting. If I were to add it in here, this because I would be gluing it to this. The ones that I don't want to put glue on or I don't want to be ruined would go in those pockets. This is just the bottom tab of one of the papers, but it was perfect for um, running a border across this. So I'm just going to quickly run a border. This is uh, the Easy Runner Grand by Scrapbook Adhesives. And if you check out my channel, you'll see that I've got a review of all the different types of tape runners and all the different types of liquid glues. So if you're not sure which one to get or what you want to buy, check that out or which one's most cost effective and works the best. There's a complete review and I actually work on making these pages in that review. So um, these are tags that are included in that paper pack and I don't want to actually use them as tags. So what I'm going to do is take out my paper cutter and just slice off the top. I'm going to use them more as like a square embellishment. And this one I'll probably save the top of this one just because it could be used somewhere else, um, kind of like as an embellishment behind a photo. And I'm just going to stack these like this and put them right down here. And then I had a plan. Oh, the stickers for a different one. And so this is the back of a tag, obviously. I'm, it was pretty, but I'm sacrificing it too. If you're going to go over a photo mount like this, you would want to make sure that you don't put adhesive up here in this corner. In this case, I don't think I quite made it onto the photo mount, so I'm not too worried about it. I'm just going to offset that a little. And then if there was a sticker or something that goes with this, I'd probably put it there. I just haven't looked through it yet, so I just want to get that page done. So this is a double-sided page. So remember I told you on this one, I just stacked two pages together, one front and one back. This one, I can just slip into the thing all by itself. So I'm going to just slip it in right here. Catching. There we go. So then that's a page done also. Okay. And then we're going to do this page. So it comes with um, all these little ephemera things in it. And I liked this one because it had the place settings on it. And I just thought that was kind of fun. So I'm, I like to mount things on a, on either a contrasting color or um, a complementary color. In this case, I really like pink and orange together. So this measures a little bit less than four, like three and three quarter by four and three quarter. So that means I cut this by five by four. So it's five long, four tall. And I usually just do it so that I've got enough for like an eighth of an inch overhang. Right. That was a little crooked. So I really like the tape runner tape because it gives you that opportunity to pull it back up. Like it hasn't soaked into the fibers of your paper yet. And it's, uh, it's clean. Like I'm not ending up with glue all over my fingers. So then this is going to be another quarter inch bigger than the orange because I wanted a double because it orange would get lost kind of in that pattern. And this dark brown just kind of gives it a nice offset. So that means this one is five and a quarter by four and a quarter. And they just call this like photo mounting and Basically, it's creating a paper pile or a layer of papers for you to put your uh, photo or an embellishment on. And then I just made sure that I still had a little bit of a border of that pretty pattern paper in the background. Okay. And then the idea with this one was to break up that pattern again. I mean, I like it, but it's really busy. I'm going to tape here. And I kind of wanted this one offset because I was looking through some of the stickers and I'm thinking, no, I'm not sure. I'm going to put that journaling kind of to the edge. That went down crooked too. So 
So this was just a journal um, tidbit that was in one of those packs, the journaling packs, and I'm going to put it down and then I'm going to tuck these leaves behind it. And then the idea was some stickers on this one. And I think I'm going to have this one come off the page just a little and go right to the edge of my pattern paper just for a little visual oomph. And then you can use the this runner on small things. See how I just kind of had that tab. I just ran it kind of carefully and just dispersed a few of those little tabs on there. And then I'm going to tuck this just like that. So you can use these on fairly small pieces because one little tab is about that is that big. It's like, I don't know, tiny, 16th of an inch maybe. Okay. And then my note to self was to put some stickers on here. And I wanted this dinner tray because it's already a, a done place setting, which goes with that. And I was going to put it right here. And then I had already, I'm using one for the cover of the book as well. It was a little bit bigger, but I didn't realize that I wanted to put it with something like that before I did it. And then I want to do this dinner is ready. And maybe this let's eat because it's in green. And it's just kind of a nice visual offset between the top and the bottom. Okay, so that was just a fun way to decorate. I could put like family notes right here. I could put the year. I could put yeah anything that re related to the family. Or if this was given as a gift, I could put to whoever from me with love. This is going to be my second page in there because the front has kitchen conversion. So it could be this direction or this direction. Either one could be the very first page. Your recipe book to look at kitchen conversions so that should be closer to the front of your book and then the next page could be the table settings so i'm going to flip back here to the beginning and then just like any other three ring binder or binder you just open it and close it and so now that page is done as well okay so let's go ahead and decorate the cover and then some of those tabs and then we'll work on some of these four by sixes that that'll just kind of clear up some of my space for me all right there is um a lot of paper in here that actually complements the snap album and i couldn't decide if i wanted my front to be as red as this back or if i wanted something with more like a different color to offset that red but i've already designed my front and so i want i wanted this to kind of stand out against that front so um we'll go over the front in just a second but right now we're going to decorate just this front page or the front binder so what i'm going to do first is just kind of line it up so that i know i've got like of a half inch towards the top actually let's open this up a bit easier to see the other thing was i didn't really care if i uh, ruined this alphabet because i couldn't think of anything i was going to use with it so i'm not too worried about that i want a little bit of a border to come down over this edge so i'm giving myself probably about a half inch room there let's see yeah and you could even go so far as to say an inch but it looks like it's about three quarters right now so i'm going to stick to that and then come down here and mark this about three quarters of an inch and that's going to be my cut line. And then I want it to be three quarters of an inch out this way. So about right there. And that, that works well because it's kind of like right on one of those white lines for the alphabet. So I'm going to slice that up. And I'll probably, I'm going to slice it this 12 direction first because this makes it a little bit longer than 12 by 12, 12 which makes it kind of hard to fit into your cutter. So just line that up, get a slice, and then this one right here. Okay, so we're done with the cutter for a minute, and then I'm just going to run a bunch of this Easy Runner all around the edges of this binder and across the center, so just strips of it. I'll probably, I'm going to run a strip right down the edge of this fabric too, like as close as I can get it without going onto the fabric. Easier said than done. But you can always add another layer if you need to. Okay. Okay. And then I'm just covering it decently because I want this to stick stick. Okay. And then just eyeball that you've got the same amount of space, top and bottom. 
and I'm butting it right up against the fabric edge right here of this. The binding is like a really nice like canvas kind of fabric. So, so when you open it up, you should have it hanging out the sides like this, right? And I'm just going to do a precursory kind of bend to get that paper starting to break and fold right there. And then that way I also know where I need to miter my quarters corners. If you want to, you can run like a, um, a scoring tool or something down this, this side there. I'm not too worried about it. I'm just going to go for it. Okay. And then I'm going to run my tape all along the edges of this too. And probably, yeah, it's pretty easy to get it like right up to the edge of that. So you can just do it right there on your paper. If you have liquid glue and it's PVA or like something that's super strong and and like acid free, obviously, and you're willing and you want to use liquid glue, you can too. I just have this and it's going to be quicker and easier for my dry time while I'm videoing. You can see I kind of drive crazy with this thing too. And so I just fold the edges in if I start to go over. And it's not really going to matter because I'm going to cover the inside of that with paper too. So, so far I've only used the one pack, but it might be that I have to go get another one if I want to like make this a really thick album. Okay, so then you can either cut the square right here or you can cut it triangular. I'm not going to cut it triangular because I think it's going to take up too much room. So I'm or like going to have too much space there. So I'm going to kind of angle it in here. And when I did that pre-fold, it kind of already told me where I can cut that square out. basically you just want to cut right to the edge of that this tip right here on the edge of your cover so that you can miter those corners and you don't end up with all that bulky paper right there when you fold it in and then you're just going to fold your edges in and you could miter it now if you wanted to i might do that just for a little bit more classy look on that one side of that one piece So just cut a basically a right triangle out of it there and fold up my top and my bottom and it should go right to the edge and then this one will just fold up and over it okay and then you can either choose to put pattern paper or cardstock here on the inside but i would put i would cover this too just to kind of help hold those edges down and i'll show you what i mean i'm going to cut a piece of paper really quick I like the contrast of uh, this like kind of olivey green with against that red. So I, that's what I went with for the inside of mine. Uh, the way that if, as, as long as you've gone more than half of an inch over for this flap, then this um, paper, I cut mine at six by eight also, and it should cover it perfectly. And then it kind of gives that just that little bit of border so that your fingers not catching on it and pulling the paper up too. And then you can either use liquid glue to glue this down or your tape runner again. And I'm just going to go ahead and use my tape runner. I'm going to get some use out of this bad boy. And I didn't quite make it to the edge on that one, so I'm going to just kind of run it again and then fold it. And then some strips across. Anywhere you've got those, it might be sticking out, fold it back, because at this point, this is our finished piece. Unless, of course, you want to do like a border of a different color or something, too, just to dress it up. You can always decorate this inside cover, too. Okay, so then I'm going to just line it up with the edge of that fabric again and eyeball my top and bottom close enough. And then lay it down. Okay, and then this is just going to basically help to secure those these corners too. Like if having that adhesive on the top of it is going to keep them from popping up. So then that's what the front of our book looks like now. Okay, and um, so what I did was for this front, this was one of the cards that was just in the paper, and I trimmed it down so that I had a little bit of a border. And then I did a I think this is a four by six for out of brown cardstock. Okay, yeah, four and four and a quarter. So four and a quarter brown by six. And then I put this family piece that was in that paper pack on there. And this is just a, a six by eight piece of pattern paper that I cut. Then I cut this little strip of tan down here at 
one and just a little bit more than one and a quarter. You could probably do it one and a half by six. And then I just took those, um, the fun little die cuts or the, the, the journal bits and the, um, bits and pieces and use those to put on the front. And then this is one of those also. So I cut this, um, this mat and, and then a second mat, just a little bit larger to put this on so that I can put this here on the front. And it looks like it's going to take up more space than I thought. So it might be that I offset it. It was, yeah, probably like that. Okay. So I'm going to glue this with enough border top and bottom like that. And then these on the top. And I was kind of sort of brainstorming in my head last night. How could you like do a page protector on the front of this? And I don't have page protectors here to like experiment with and cut up. But I'm wondering if you could cut up a page protector and then kind of wrap it around the front of that cover the same way we just did the, the pattern paper as a protector for the front of that. Because obviously these are paper, they're not laminated or anything. And if you're going to be grabbing them with hands that have been cooking, it won't take long for this to get kind of grubby. I can't say, I think I did want to butt that right up against there too. I couldn't remember. I'm pretty sure we have enough space though. We do. Okay. So then I'm just going to start layering these. I'm going to start with the pink so that I can have it where I want it. And I'm just going to go right to the edge of this binder. Um, it's kind of got a fold there where it opens. And so I don't want it to be on that fold because it'll start to bend up my tag a little. And then same with the green. And these um, mounts or like the photo mounts are something that you can find like to cut with your Cricut too. If you don't have like a die cut or something to cut with it, you can use your Cricut to do that. Okay, so then there's our cover. Okay, so let's go ahead and put together a few of the four by six pages, just like cute ones instead of just recipe. I mean, not that the recipe cards aren't cute, but let's decorate a four by six area also. And then we're going to do a few flaps and call it good. All right, so in this one, we're going to decorate um, a four by six little pack like right here. And then this one here has the, th it's the three by four. So it's just, uh, and there's two sections of that. Plus we're also gonna do um, a little bit of stacking and I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. So these are um, other tags that come in this, um, this kit and that Simple Stories adds in most of their paper packets. And when you cut these, they fit into those, those squares perfectly. And I'll show you what I mean. So like this goes in there perfectly because it's a three by four. So you can use these just for a little filler or like extra embellishments also. And then I've got a piece of cardstock that I cut that size. And we're going to go ahead and decorate this four by six really fast. So I just cut a pattern piece here, four by six, and then I can always decorate the back of it too if I wanted to, or throw a recipe card behind it. And then this square is a three and three quarter by three and three quarters. It's, it's square. And I wanted this as a border over here. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball enough of a space in between those two to have like that brown frame around this photo mount. Okay. Run some adhesive along and this is another one of those ones where it was just the end that I cut off of the pattern paper and I was like oh that's still cute and I can use it really quick and easy to decorate the edge of something so use up your scraps and I'm not saying save them forever but while you're working on the project save your scraps because you never know what you could use as you're going or you're going to need like that tiny little something that makes just the right amount of oomph okay. and then this one is three and a half by three and a half square Okay. And then there's these little um, like tickets that come in that ephemera pack and or die cut pack. And I'm just going to tear it like it's actually been a, a ticket that was torn. Right. And run a strip of adhesive on it. And stick it up in this corner. And then I want to do the pie. 
and the milk as an ephemera thing here, or just like a little embellishment on the side. Okay, so just a quick little four by six photo mount or mat that you can use to put into one of these four by six slots right here like this, okay? And then I'm gonna tuck this green one into this. It's gonna be the base, like maybe I'll put a photo on there or something, I don't know yet. And then I wanted this What's Cooking in this one next to it. Right. And then the way that that looks on the back is just like this. So it's it's already pretty in patterns. You could just slip another recipe card in there. Um, like I have these recipe cards that are singles, right? So I could always slip a single recipe card in behind that. I have to do it from the front. Oops. Okay. Something like that. And then um, these are super, super fun. So these are... Um, the photo flip pockets, okay? And they come with uh, four by four, or sorry, four four by sixes, four four by fours, and four, four three by fours. Or, yeah. So I'm gonna do three of these three by fours, and I'm going to, I want this one in the back. So when you end the flip, that'll be, actually, when you end the flip, it'll be this one. So this is gonna be the back of my flip stack though. I want this one at the front, and then I was thinking like, you could either do a photo in that center one, or I'll just slip something in there right now just to, so that it's easier to see on camera. Um, probably do these. But you could have this as a cover for each one, and then the backside could be a photo, or it could be the rest of, like, parts of the recipe. It could be a story that goes with that recipe. Okay. But then the idea is these open at the very, very top. These are opening right here on this front. You just pull this sticky adhesive tab off, and then line it up with the top of your page protector and this line right here so that it's not overhanging too much there. And they, they kind of come down a little bit further so that you'll know that you can grab and flip, right? And then you can either stack them like in a pile right there or you can bring them down just a little. So I'm gonna actually do an accordion stack. So I want this one to be next. Um, if it was something you were putting in there and it was final, you could go ahead and block that off. But if you still want to be able to put something in there, you should still be able to lift this up. Yeah, and you can still tuck in there. It's going to be a little bit more like difficult to get stuff in there, but you can put this right towards the top and still have room for tucking there. I still want mine to be accordion style though, so I'm going to bring it down just a little. And then that gives your visual eye. It's going to hang over this just a little bit. You're going to know or the user is going to know to flip it up and look through those other pieces. Okay, so I, the line of that is right there. And I'm just going to line up perfectly on the edge and at the top there. And lay it down. Might have got a little crooked. Let's see if they pull off very easy. Oh, yep. We can reposition for a second. Okay, and then I want this Better Homes and Gardens kind of style one to be at the very, very top. Okay, so that should give you an idea of how you can um, decorate throughout this entire book with all the different sizes and shapes and the ways to do your pages. Okay, um, so this once it's done, super fun because you can just flip up through it. Okay, all right, I found one other technique for us to do before we um, move on to decorating the thing. So I did move that photo flip up just to see what it would do. Um, if I, if I could stack it and still be able to get things in there, and I'm pretty sure I can. Like, it looks like I can still open that up and slip stuff in there. So the other option would be to just put it just a little bit lower, like finish filling this and then just put it just a little bit lower. Um, but I will say for a few minutes, it's still repositionable and movable. So kind of play with it, see what you like best before you finalize. And then if you don't get it all the way lined up, obviously you can, you can mess with that too, okay? Um, I just, I think it's going to work a little bit better having it up here. That way I can add some photos and my story to it also. The other thing I was going to say is um, there's, so then there's also this size, which fits some of these larger um, things that were in the pack as well. And I really liked this one. Um, 
my daughter really likes that 70s show and this kind of looks like kitty's kitchen and so i think that would be fun to add in there and which made me think if you have an older kid that's moving out and they want some family recipes this would make a great holiday gift uh, so throw some family recipe copies in there and then give them their own little cookbook to start so i wanted to put this one on here for notes or ideas or maybe um, a table of contents for what might be in this section okay and so i'm i just cut this out of the pattern paper as well that's just the size it was which works perfect for giving this a frame but i want a little bit of an embellishment there but i don't want anything like sticking up so now i've lost them oh i have these rub-ons and if you've never done a rub-on we're going to do one of those together really quick so basically what this is is it's a sticker but it's like a flat i don't know like colored sticker that you just kind of the adhesives on the back and you rub it and it just transfers that image over onto here it's kind of sort of similar i would say to like what you do like as far as sublimation now with your cricut I'm going to do this love and family together kind of centered on the bottom of this one so you get it lined up where you want it and then you there, it comes with a popsicle stick make sure i'm in in frame there it comes with a popsicle stick and you just kind of rub across the image and if you were worried about touching the other ones and getting them stuck to the paper you can cut this image out sorry for the wiggling it's it's not an actual craft table so. So like I hit that pumpkin a little, I'm going to just go ahead and finish him off. And I might actually do that heart too. Okay, and then the, my and is not sticking properly, so I'm going to rub it one more time. You can kind of, just don't move your paper off, off, like super fast. Kind of lift slowly and see what transferred and what didn't. And you can tell what transfers because it kind of goes a little opaque on you as you're rubbing and that's when you know that it's left the surface of the transfer paper okay i didn't get the g looks like i got it all and i want that heart too okay so there's a pattern in here there's the flowers but it's just kind of a fun way to put something it kind of like you can't really feel it once it's on the paper it doesn't have any dimension to it it just goes down flat so i wanted that and then i kind of want this spoon to go across so then the other option if you don't want other things to stick i'm going to steal that heart too is you just cut these apart just to get this the piece that you want okay and then that way you don't have to worry about other pieces sticking to your project then you just put this back in the package the way that it is on the tissue and this spoon is going to go this way sorry for the bouncing again See how well that's sticking. Pretty good. Okay, and then I want to take that heart and put it up here. So I've got three. Oops. I kind of messed it up. That one slid on me. So you can see that the imaging, like the little sticker part, kind of like skittered across. I can fill it in with a pen or something though. Okay, so that's just another way to decorate something quick easy and in the same theme that you're working in. So now I'm going to stick this in one of these flip flop things. And I don't actually care if this one gets, well, I guess I do need to open it one more time. And I say, I don't care if it gets opened and I was going to just go ahead and seal it down, down, but I do need it to open so I can put a story in there. Or a table of contents or something but i'm going to put it right here across these recipes because the recipes are nice but you're basically just going to lift this up to do the recipe so i want this attached to the top of this page so that it's kind of decorating my recipes and then um, i can either if you wanted to you could have this and then a photo on the other side or you can have a photo and then you can flip up to a story i think it's just another way to make your recipe album a little more interactive and, and just visually appealing when you flip the page. 
All right, for this last one, I don't have a full sheet of this, but I really want to be able to use this pattern paper and this yellow because I like it a lot. And the other thing is I don't have a hole punch or something that I can cleanly do these with or even an exact, well, I guess I could use my scissors as an exacto. So if you wanted to, you wouldn't, you don't have to go right to over these, these holes, right? You can go right up to the edge of them. And on this one, we're not actually going to wrap like we did before. We're just going to go right to the edge of this and then down here on this bottom. So I'm hoping... I might be able to get enough out of this one. I'm probably not going to. So my idea was, yeah, I was going to wrap this, like have a strip with a different color right here, but I think I'm going to have to use a different pattern. So then I just have to decide, do I want yellow or do I want brown? And I really think I want the yellow. So I'm going to go ahead and trim this back and then cut it down to the size of this tabbed chipboard. So I think I'll do like five or four. I think that's four and a half. And then this is, how long is it? Eight. It's just a little bit more than eight. It looks like it might be eight and a quarter. Yeah. So if I cut the paper at eight and a quarter. So then I need another paper to go to do the strip right here and to decorate that. Uh, if you have sandpaper, this is going to make it a lot, lot easier. If not, I mean, it's not a big deal, but sandpaper would be ideal. I don't like that pink with it either. I'm just trying to find a color that I like with it that I have left. Mm, that red or the blue. Mm, let's go with red. Okay, so then this needs to be cut at eight and a quarter also. And I need the overhang because I'm going to trim with scissors. So it's okay that it's larger. This way. Okay, so first what you're going to do, like, and if you do this with a full solid paper, that works too. You don't have to cut it into two pieces like I just did. If you've got a piece of paper that covers the entire thing, by all means do the entire thing. But I want a strip of color right here, like a different color to kind of break up this yellow and give it a decorative edge. And my piece wasn't big enough to cover, so it's just a way that I'm using scraps. Okay, so I'm gonna run my tape all along the edges. I gotta get better at being accurate with this thing. And then just down through the center. So it's not bubbling up on me. I'm going to tuck those edges in. And then line up with the edge. I'm going to put this, this part's got, it's got the sticky hanging off too. So I could either put it over here and then overlap it with my other pattern or just fold it in like I just did. Okay, so I'm going to line these up right with the holes and then with my top and bottom. And go ahead and press it down. And this one, I'm going to run my tape all along the edge of this cardboard. And all along the edge of that pattern. If it was a straight tab, I would do it along the edges of the straight tab. It's um, Since it's kind of curvy, I just ran it all... I just covered it basically and that now I'm just going to fold back all those curvies. And if you're using glue, then I would say just make sure you've got a really good covering right there if you need to like smear it around, spread it out. Okay. And then once you have that adhesive done, I'll probably put a strip of one other color. Maybe that's where I'll get that brown in there that I wanted and just do a strip right there between the two, but then you're going to turn it over. And you can either use an X-Acto knife. In my case, I'm going to use scissors because I don't have an X-Acto knife. And I'm going to follow that edge. And I said, if you had sandpaper, this would be ideal because you would basically you get a rough cut, like you cut this off roughly. And then you could use the sandpaper to kind of smooth that edge. Just tear. Okay. So 
that gave you your edge. Now it's decorated. If you have sandpaper, rough that edge up with your sandpaper just to kind of give it like a nice smoother edge and it'll get rid of some of those rough cut pieces. Okay. And then obviously decorate this as you want to. It could be a title page. It could be a section. If you've got like dinner recipes and then you're going to have cookie recipes or whatever, that this would be where you could mark that with either creating a title or using those little journal tidbits or whatever. Okay. And I'm just going to overlap those two like that but put it in your binder and then you can flip through to whichever section there's a there's three of those that come with this i'm sure you can probably get more and then i put all of my extras for my page protectors in here just to see what all would fit and then i put those um flippy flaps in one of these pockets so that i've got it for later and i'll probably put all the different pieces and parts that go with this pattern pack in here just to hold it for now you can decorate the back also um, we just didn't have the time to do that. So you could do similar to what you did in the front or just throw another piece of pattern paper on the back. Um, but there you go. That's just a quick and easy, quick and easy little mini album that you can keep with all your favorite things in it or give it away as a gift. Um, if you have questions, comments, let me know. There is, uh, if you'd like to build an album from scratch, there is a um, Tis the Season Christmas album in my shop that you actually like do your own binding and everything so you could set the size that you wanted and it's great for holiday photos also um so check out the shop for that if you want other things to do with paper crafting or you've got a cricket and you would like cut files um originally i was going to try to include those in this album but there was just enough stuff in this pack that we didn't need to do anything extra really um but there are free files and scrapbook layouts and things like that on my website in the free library and then in my shop there are lots of Cricut cut files for cards and scrapbook layouts and um, little ephemera things that you could use for albums plus that is the season album so make sure you check that out follow me hit subscribe ring the notification bell and thanks for your support and just remember it's shop.lemonyfizz.com um, your support's greatly appreciated and it just means that I can share more fun tutorials with you